there, it's Professor McDonald. In this video, we will learn about the coefficient of variation, what it is, and how to use it. And we will learn how to calculate statistics for multiple sets of data very quickly. So let's begin by calculating each of these, then we'll talk about the coefficient of variation and what it means. So we'll begin by using the average function. Remember that whenever you're programming a cell to do math of any kind or using a formula, you would put an equal sign first and then enter the data. For the standard deviation, assuming that this is sample data, we would do stdev.p if it's a population, but s if we're assuming it's a sample or if we've been told it's a sample, even better. And the coefficient of variation is the standard deviation divided by the mean. So this is a relative measure of variation, the standard deviation relative to the mean. Then we should make that a percentage. So we can right click the cell, format, go to number, percentage, and then choose however many decimal places you need. And then the range, that's going to be the difference between the largest value and the smallest value in the data set. So we can use max and min, so max, of all these values, close parentheses, minus min of all these values, and close parentheses, enter. Now, once you do your range, make sure it's positive. If it's negative, it's probably because you mixed up the order and you did min minus max by mistake, but it is a distance, so it should be positive. Also, we can set the rounding for all of these. We can make sure that we're using the round off rule for measures of center and variation, which is one place more than the original data values. So my original data values um, in each of these, there's no places shown after the decimal. So one place more is just point, is one decimal. One place after the decimal. There we go, got that out finally. And we're going to now do that for each of the other remaining data sets by copying these relative formulas over. So you'll select while your cursor is in the white cross select mode, then you will come down over the bottom right corner where the copy handle is, the little green box there, until your cursor looks like a black plus sign. Then hold and drag, and there you go. Oh, this got messed up. I wanted this to be a percentage to one decimal place is fine. All right, now we're good and we can start to interpret what we see here. First of all, the student, we have an average student number of 4.5. Now, this looks like this is just an identification for each student in the class that took the pretest and then took the post-test. So looking at the average of the student number really has no meaning, does it? That's because we know identification numbers are not really quantities, they're categorical or qualitative data. So all of these statistics really are meaningless here. So why don't we go ahead and clear the contents there and focus on these statistics from our pretest and our post-test scores. Now, what would you be interested in looking at a pretest compared to a post-test? Well, obviously we'd be interested in the mean and we would expect to see a lower mean for the pretest and a better, higher mean for the post test, assuming that the students learned something between the pretest and the post post test. We might also expect to see that the values in the pretest might be more sporadic or more spread out, kind of all over the place, than in the post test, right? Because if you're taking a test before learning something, then your all of the different students might have different backgrounds. Um, that they're working from, and then after receiving instruction, we might expect that they have more consistent scores. Well, we don't see that if we're just looking at the standard deviations, do we? We see a higher standard deviation for the post-test. However, with a higher mean like this, a significantly higher mean, that four units or four points in the test score um, that is a standard up or down from the mean, may not be as meaningful as the 2.2 compared to the mean of nine. So if we look at the relative variation there, we see that we have a higher relative variation in the pretest score, which is more what we would expect and hope for. 
So it looks like we had more consistency in the post-test scores. Good. Now also the range we can look at, the range here was smaller than the range here. Now why might that be? Well, you might think about how maybe um, some of the students did not really study and didn't learn very much, so they stayed on the low end. And then some of the students probably learned a lot more than some of the others studying harder, or maybe they had a stronger background to begin with. And so we have a bigger range because we've got those low values staying low and then those extra high values and uh, creating a bigger distance between the bottom and the top. So the coefficient of variation, the ratio of standard deviation to mean, that's standard deviation divided by mean as a percentage, used to compare the amounts of variation in two sets of data or even more than two sets of data that do not have the same mean or have different units of measurement. You can also calculate the coefficient of variation for just one set of data if you're interested in seeing that relative variation.